Streptococcus gallolyticus, formerly known as Strep Bovis. It is a gram-positive coccus. It is non-enterococcus. If you've missed my recent video that was on enterococcus, be sure to check it out. The word coccus means spherical, so this bacterium is ovoid or spherical in shape. And it has chain-like growth pattern. Why? Because the word strep means chain. Like all the other strep bacteria, this bacterium also belongs to the family Streptococcus. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum everybody, today we'll be talking about Strep gallolyticus, formerly known as Strep bovis, in detail. But before getting started, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. So let's dive straight into the video. Strep gallolyticus or Strep bovis is catalase negative. We are going to talk about that catalase test in lab diagnosis section. This bacterium is gamma hemolytic, but sometimes it also shows alpha hemolysis or beta hemolysis on petri dish, the blood agar plate. That's why you can also say that it is sometimes beta or alpha, but it is mainly gamma hemolytic. As it is non enterococcus, so it does not grow in 6.5% NACL. And this belongs to less field group D classification. We are going to touch upon the classification in a moment. Lecture outline, we are done with the introduction. Now we'll be looking at the classification, morphology, habitat, transmission, pathogenesis and clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Classification. Streptococcus is further classified based on serology and the strep gallolyticus belongs to the last field group D and also on the basis of hemolysis and biochemistry. On the basis of hemolysis, strep are further classified into alpha, beta and gamma hemolytic bacteria. Alpha hemolytic bacteria do partial hemolysis on blood agar and are further classified into strep pneumoniae and strep virudens on the basis of optogen sensitivity. On the other hand, beta hemolytic bacteria are responsible for doing complete hemolysis on blood agar plate and they're further classified based on base situation sensitivity into group A like strep pyogenes and group B like strep agalactiae bacteria and the gamma hemolytic bacteria which are responsible for doing no hemolysis are further classified based on their growth in 6.5% salt solution. If a bacterium grows in that solution, it is enterococcus and it is further classified into enterococcus fecalis and enterococcus faecium. And if a bacterium does not grow in that salt solution, it is termed as non-enterococci that is strep gallolyticus which is formerly called strep bovis. Gamma hemolytic means no hemolytic. Hemolysis. As you can see there, like uh, there's no zone around the colonies. Yellow one is the colony and there's no zone around it. It means there's no hemolysis. Morphology. Strep gallolyticus or bovis is ovoid or spherical in shape. It is arranged in chains. Its diameter varies from 0.8 to 1 micrometer. There's not much difference when you see strep gallolyticus and the enterococcus under the microscope. This bacterium is purple in color if uh, we see it under the microscope because it is gram positive and is black when we go for its culture structure. This bacterium has got thick peptidoglycan cell wall that leads to the purple color dye because this uh, thick peptidoglycan layer in the cell wall does what it retains that dye. This bacterium is encapsulated, non motile, and non spore forming. Habitat it is found in GI tract as its name shows that it is not in pterococcus but still it is present in GI tract. Transmission transmission occurs via fecal oral route mainly but sometimes it can also occur via geni to urinary tract or root. Pathogenesis. The top virulence factor in the list is capsule. This is the last video in the series of strapped bacteria, so you now might be familiar what the capsule does. I'm not going to explain it right in this video. The second one is pili. These are fimbri. In case of strapped gallolytica, these are pillless loci or pill 1, pill 2, pill 3. These are filamentous structures that mediate cell binding. Okay, let me explain that to you. Consider this is the strapped gallolytica spectrum and it has got its pillars there. What happens that this pillars binds to collagen and biofilms kind of things. When a damaged tissue is injured, it has collagen in it. This bacterium being the opportunistic gets to this place and latches onto the collagen there and causes further infections. But in case of normal tissue getting injured, this is not the case. Strep gallolyticus or bovis is responsible for causing certain diseases. I've listed them there. The first one in the list is bacteremia, then infective endocarditis, 
diabetes, UTIs, biliary diseases, colon cancer, and IBS, inflammatory bowel syndrome. Clinical findings. Let's talk about infective endocarditis. This is due to the strep galuticus bacteremia, and there's a close association between the infective endocarditis and colon cancer. If you see a patient with infective endocarditis, then go for colonoscopy because there is chance that this person may be having the colon cancer and 80% of patients do have that. Lab diagnosis will need samples of blood, feces, and so. On gram staining, it will reveal that this bacterium is gram positive because it's purple colored. Under microscopy, this bacterium is spherical ovoid in shape and is arranged in chains. Okay, as I told you that we'll be talking about catalase test in lab diagnosis section. Catalase test. It is a test of the catalase enzyme. If a bacteria has that enzyme, it will convert hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. And oxygen is responsible for forming bubbles. In the case of strep galoliticus, there's no catalase enzyme. So hydrogen peroxide will not be converted into water and oxygen and there will be no bubbles. That's why there are no bubbles formed in case of strep bovis or galoliticus, which is also known in pterococcus. And this test is negative for this bacterium because this bacterium does not release catalase enzyme. Culture. Culture is done on blood agar which revealed that this bacterium does gamma hemolysis. And colonies are black colored. Other things that we can do are colonoscopy if we want to uh, diagnose the colon cancer because it has really close association with infective endocarditis that is caused by strep galoliticus bacteremia. Treatment. Infections caused by strep galoliticus are treated with penicillin G, third gen cephalosporin, ceftriaxone, or gentamicin. Prevention. By practicing good hygiene and maintaining healthy lifestyle, infections caused by strep galoliticus can be prevented. All right, guys, let's review everything really quick. We studied non enterococcus the strep bovis or galoliticus today. It is responsible for causing bacteremia, infective endocarditis, UTIs, biliary diseases, colon cancer, or IBS, the inflammatory bowel syndrome. It is transmitted via fecal oral route mainly, but sometimes maybe via gentourinary tract. Humans are the hosts, and the primary location is GI tract. Diagnosis is based on gram staining, microscopy, culture, colonoscopy, and catalase. Test. Infections caused by non enterococcus are treated with penicillin G, surgeon cephalosporin, ceftriaxone, and gentamicin. And that's it. Hopefully, we'll see you in the next video. Assalamu alaikum.